You may have seen on the back of the nurse being sentenced that uh, the government have now said there is going to be an inquiry. But they've said it's going to be what we call a non-statutory inquiry. And there's been um, a number of people saying, well, actually, no, this should be a statutory inquiry. So what's the difference, uh, you may be wondering. I, I know I was. Uh, so thanks to the uh, very nice Adam Wagner at Doughty Street Chambers, he explained this to me. So with apologies to him for everything I get wrong, uh, this is the difference. Um, when it comes to inquiries, a government can say, we are just setting up an inquiry. And it's a very broad thing. They can appoint one or more people to run the inquiry and they can set the remits of the inquiry. We want you to investigate the following. Um, but that inquiry has no powers whatsoever. They can investigate, they can invite people to come and speak with them. They can invite people to provide evidence, but there's no compulsion and people can just say, no, I'm not going to turn up. I mean, I think, did Mark Zuckerberg do that or something? He refused to attend an inquiry, didn't he? Um, so people say, well, that's just not satisfactory in a case like this. We need a statutory inquiry. What's a statutory inquiry? Well, that's one that uh, is set up under the Coroner's Act. Um, and effectively, it gives the inquiry lots of powers. Um, the government still have to appoint somebody to run it, and that would usually be like a high court judge or an ex-high court judge. But they pretty much have all the powers that a court would have. You know, they can compel witnesses to attend. They can order disclosure of evidence. People are answering under oath and subject to penalty of perjury. You know, they're subject to contempt of court if they don't cooperate or they refuse to provide evidence. Um, one thing, of course, is uh, I've discussed before about one of the differences between a common law and a civil law system is that, generally speaking, common law systems are adversarial. Um, you know, it's the lawyers who decide what evidence to produce, what witnesses, and what case to run, and the judges like the, you know the referee. Whereas in an inquisitorial system, the judge actually runs the case and says, you know, these are the witnesses I want to hear from. This is the evidence I need gathering. These are the questions I want asking. Uh, and an inquiry, as the name suggests, you know, you can see the common root there, inquiry, um, inquisition, you know, inquest, all that sort of thing. The judge sets the ambit of the inquiry. So the judge will decide which witnesses to call, what the evidence is. Um, obviously, parties can be represented in cases like this and, you know, often will be. I mean, the families will probably want people there. Any particular witnesses who are summoned, especially if they're, you know, liable to be on the hook for anything themselves you know they may well want to be lawyered up and the, and the lawyers can suggest and say look we think this witness would help we think this evidence would assist us perhaps you'd like to sort of order their attendance or order the production of that evidence but yeah i hope you found that useful i mean again if you want me to go into more detail about this um i i can do mention it in the comments i think we'll just you know i'm going to wait and see what happens and whether the government actually do decide to do a statutory inquiry because there does seem to be a a lot of pressure there for that to happen and I'm, I'm sure you can understand why. Um, anyway, yeah, if you found that helpful or useful, please consider clicking the like button, subscribing and sharing. And also, like I say, you know, any other topics you want to discuss, um, just let us know in the comments.